Well, hello and welcome along. Thanks for joining in. It's James McNamara here with you. I'm going to talk to you today about a very successful leadership workshop that I've been running called The Engaging Leader. And I'll just show you the feedback that's coming from the room. So this is live presentations. So you can see that the feedback there when you average all of those rating scales uh, is 95%. Uh, very proud of the how practical or usable did you find the session content, 97%. And I'll talk about that um, throughout this presentation because the concept of relevancy to the learner is incredibly important. I'm also going to talk to you today about taking a successful in-room workshop and then transferring that to an online learning experience. It's not just as simple as taking that content and, and um, putting your face on camera and uh, recording the PowerPoint slide off your computer screen and talking through it. Um, it. It just doesn't work that way. There's so much more to being able to deliver an engaging online presentation but equally there are so many more opportunities available to us from the point of reinforcement to make sure that learning sticks that we can do uh, or deliver learning in a way that's far far more powerful than trying to cram ever so much information into a three hour or or six hour sort of half day full day session so exciting times ahead on the webinar uh, today and let's keep going. So this webinar is for human resource, learning and development and training managers who are driving leadership development in their own organization. It's also for business owners and executives who are interested in leadership development. It's for those who know that online learning has more to offer, um, but unfortunately what many of us are experiencing is simply the same sort of didactic um, you know, a, approach that's been used in the room um, to uh, online webinars. And um, we certainly saw a lot of that, didn't we, in, in 2020. And what I've put there, people who were frustrated or who were frustrated in 2020 with in-room sessions delivered via webinar. So what I mean by that, the same old approach as if you had 20 people in a room um, where you had the benefit of being able to do exercises, small group discussions, breakout groups, but literally just taking that content and um, whacking it together on, on a webinar. It just doesn't really cut it. Uh, and people who want to know how to engage leaders in learning, get it to stick. I know that sounds a, <laughs> a little bit raw, but how do we get the learning to stick so that people then have new behaviours implemented in the workplace? And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. So there's a picture of me in full flight in the room, James McNamara. Um, I've been delivering this type of training for quite a while, helping people in all areas where they need to influence others. So certainly uh, leaders in organizations, but also people in customer facing roles. So um, business development people, sales people, customer service uh, and of course those who own their own enterprise and helping them to solve the people puzzle. I'll tell you what I did a number of years ago, it's well over a decade ago. I'd started to get feedback from participants that elements of the workshops I was running were extremely practical and they were normally around the group discussion. So we'd, we'd hit on a topic uh, where there were a number of people in the room that were experiencing that same challenge or wanted to know more about that, that point of information. And the ensuing group discussion was extremely beneficial to people. And this put me on a, on a path to be able to make my workshops extremely relevant um, because relevancy is the key to get people to... Um, stay involved with you, to to be um, anticipating what's coming up, to be ready to learn. And so in a moment, I'm going to talk to you about how I achieved that. I'm going to tell you a story of what I did to do that. But just before that happens, let me show you what actual comments are coming out of 
the workshops um, with my focus on relevancy. So Jenny says, James has this uncanny way of tailoring his presentations to totally tap into where you are, where you are at in your own workplace. Peter uh, from the Royal Australian Air Force said, I was expecting the usual rehash theories to be presented. The engagement with the audience was very welcome. So happy not to see the usual stuff worthwhile and tailored to different levels of managers and leaders. Experienced managers can gain valuable insights and new tools. And this from David, an executive director in the state government. Many thanks for the fantastic session. The feedback from the team was overwhelmingly positive. Comments like, the best session we have had in the last 10 years, if not ever, from one very experienced and long-serving manager. So what happens when you get the relevancy part right is the learners engage. They love it. They open their minds. They want to take on new information. They become like a sponge. And equally, when you have experience in the room, there's so much that can be offered from the group of people that you were training. All of those stories, experiences, uh, and anecdotes can really help um, bring the material alive. So what did I do to make things relevant? It's fairly simple, actually. I decided that in the beginning part of the workshop, so after we'd done the um, introductions and the housekeeping and that sort of thing, I would start a process where I would give people five minutes of focused, um, quiet time to think about what their top leadership challenges were. And they would write that down on a, effectively a, a spare page in the workbook. Then I'd give them another few minutes to talk with the person that sat next to them, just to help get some sort of social proof, I guess, if you like, um, about what those challenges were, and through that process to choose their number one. That if they could get a solution to that leadership challenge by spending a day with me in a leadership training workshop, that that would be an extremely good use of their time. And what I did was go around the room one by one then, and have them express what their leadership challenge was. I'd give them some on-the-spot coaching on <clears throat> things like removing labels from their descriptions and getting very focused on the behavior or the situation that was troublesome for them. Um, and, and I guess separate that from any judgments on the particular person exhibiting that behavior. Um, and it was always necessary to do that because what happens then when you do that is that the individual with the leadership challenge starts to own that challenge rather than fall into the trap of blaming a particular subordinate or team member as just being a, a difficult or horrible person. Really important lesson for the leaders. What I would do is we unpack that then for each and every person is I would give them a very quick summary at the end and let them know which sets of skills or strategies were going to be most useful for them in term, to be able to solve that leadership problem and I'd give them an indication of whereabouts in the workshop that was coming up. What I found over the years was that this session has become the favorite session for people. They, they said, look, we could just do that all day. Uh, we, we like that because I was responding right then and there exactly to the expressed need of that individual and putting it right in front of them, the sets of skills and strategies that are best for them to focus on. Now, mind you, when I first did this, the very first workshop where I did this, I didn't quite know how I was going to go after I ran that session. Uh, what would I need in terms of a slide deck? My goodness, what were they going to tell me as their number one leadership <laughs> challenges? And if you've got 20 odd people in the room, what would I need in terms of supporting uh, learner materials by way of workbooks and, and additional notes and so forth? So what I made uh, decided to do was that I was going to take a very big slide deck um, with all of the concepts that I was currently teaching um, in leadership. So I'd have a very big slide deck and I was just going to take the time to skip through that as I needed to, to hit on the points for uh, the individuals and what that expressed as their needs. I was going to make a big workbook and let the participants know that there's a lot more information in here than what we're going to cover today 
but it's there because I've opened the floodgates literally at the beginning of this session and I wanted to make sure that we had enough to have a really robust learning experience. So that worked very well in the first workshop and it worked again well in the second workshop and then on and on and on. It worked extremely well. That's why you, you see the, the feedback that I showed you at the very start of this presentation. But what I found was that by zeroing in on the leadership challenges and providing those people the learning path and then going on to um, deliver skills and strategies training to help them uh, overcome those leadership challenges or meet those leadership challenges, I found again and again and again I was actually delivering the same sets of skills and strategies. The same sets of boilerplate skills and strategies were coming up again and again and again. And let me share those with you because these are the skills and strategies that lead to that such fantastic feedback and statements of relevancy from uh, the learners. And I must um, put a caveat in at this point. This has worked well for uh, new or emerging leaders as much as it has worked for uh, higher level, um, senior middle and even executive leaders. Of course, the discussion that ensues throughout the day is, a, is at a higher level if you've got senior or executive level in the room compared to first time supervisors. Um, however, the skill sets are hitting home. The skills and strategies are really hitting home and people taking lots of useful uh, information and, and literally a spring in their step when they leave the workshop to be able to go back to the workplace and implement. They're confident of going back and implementing and making a positive change. I'm going to list out for you now uh, the skills and strategies that I tend to focus on the most throughout these workshops. I still start with what are your top leadership challenges and I facilitate that process um, but I can tell you now these are the skills and strategies that cover nearly all of it. So where to focus your transformational efforts? So that's a, a discussion around the different levels of employee engagement and helping people to understand where are they going to get the biggest bang for their buck when it comes to the efforts they put in to influencing behavior and change at work. Uh, Self-leadership, we can only lead others as well as we can lead ourselves. So for us to be um, purpose-driven and fully aware of what our um, values are and the legacy that we want to leave as a leader, that's very, very important to create that sense of personal strength um, within leadership. The language of why. How do we help people who we are leading and influencing at work to understand where they fit into the overall big picture? Why do we do work in a certain way? Why do we do things the way we do them? Why do we do this at all? We don't necessarily employ, certainly frontline workers, for their strategic thinking prowess. So it's an incredibly important part of leadership to be able to show people where their work fits into creating the overall big picture because that's what gives meaning to work for the individual. Trust. It comes up, comes up again and again and again, in just about every session that I run on leadership or communication. Certainly when I've gone to work with teams in crisis, my goodness, it's first thing on the flip chart <laughs> if you do a brainstorming session around the, the problems at hand. Um, it's an interesting one to unpack. Uh, so we talk a lot about trust. We talk about working effectively with differences. And I can tell you that uh, a leader who can firstly appreciate and accept differences has a much better chance of being able to influence behavioral change uh, when needed. What communication strategy are we going to use? We, I teach people that based on their personality pro profile, they're going to have a preference for the types of uh, communication strategies to use. Some people like the sort of um, facilitation and conciliatory approach so they're good sort of conflict managers some people are naturally great listeners some people are naturally far more assertive um, but really if we go forward with just what our uh, communication preference is then it's like if all you've got in your toolbox is a hammer then everything looks like a nail so we need to teach leaders how to discern 
what leadership strategy, what communication strategy is needed at each point in time. Listening, incredibly important. I actually tell people that this is the most influential skill of all uh, because when people get the sense that you get them, you understand where they're coming from, then they are far more likely to listen to what you've got to say and be open to influence from you. Um, because otherwise they're just they're going to be there going yeah 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 but this situation is different you don't understand me so that's a very important uh, message for leaders Um, if listening is the yin then assertiveness is the yang how do we be effectively assertive and daniel ames from columbia university has done some tremendous work in recent decades on Uh, getting the assertiveness fit right for leaders and I certainly help people to understand that. Um, Follow a readiness. You'll have a particular leadership uh, style or preference uh, but how ready is your follower to follow you? That's a very important consideration because we need to match our leadership style with the readiness level of that individual if we're going to help them to move forward. Uh, And then finally, it comes up all the time, managing challenging behavior. Um, Quite often we see managers who have a small proportion of people on their team who are exhibiting challenging behavior, so whether that's poor conduct or poor performance, um, but those people can be the ones that take a lot of the manager's time, focus, energy, um, and create most of the stress. Uh, So... Um, It does come up, it's brought up by participants quite often, how do we handle these types of challenging behaviour? And then of course there's there's an effective use of all of the other skills that we've covered so far. So they're the 10 skill and strategy areas that keep coming up again and again and again as I ask managers what are their top leadership challenges. And when I unpack those in the context of what the audience has told me, and I'm able to refer back to individuals and be able to say, hey, let's talk about a circumstance or a situation uh, in your workplace that you're dealing with because these are the sets of skills that I think are most useful for you. We've actually got an exa- a real-life example that the participants are seeing come to life uh, and being able to see the relevancy of that material to be able to fix that type of challenge. So think about this now, a six-hour workshop. And that's about, so for a full-day workshop, which is the way I run this, it's about six hours of content by the time you take out a uh, morning tea, lunch, and afternoon tea breaks. Now, the forgetting curve. Ebbinghus, uh, famous German researcher, coined what we now call the forgetting curve. And so if you look at... 100% of the information or the curriculum or the content for the day and then how much is remembered over time. Look at this. We just fall off the cliff. Yeah. Now think about as we facilitate a day, what happens with the day? We can unpack the content. We can discuss that to help Um, create some sort of kinesthetic understanding of of a practical use of that. Um, We can do activities, uh, and if you're an experienced facilitator, you do understand how long it takes to prep for an activity, to give the activity decent time to um, get a result, and then to debrief that activity to create um, meaning and and, and output. Um, So you can't do that many of those activities in a particular day. We can do some things, so activities and and group discussion to help, um, you know, with that reinforcement initially. But, you know, we've got to keep moving with the agenda, haven't we, to cover. Uh, And then we don't really have much control over what happens in the day after the workshop. You know, what happens the day after a person comes to your workshop is that they go back to a full inbox and a full in tray and many, many questions and probably a lot more Uh, on-the-fly catch-up meetings than um, any other day in that week and the chance of them getting back to the material uh, is is limited so for many in many ways it has 
some limitations, doesn't it? Um, but equally, if we just take the same approach and slap that onto a webinar, uh, then we're not going to do any better. We're not going to overcome the forgetting curve. So unfortunately, the forgetting curve really means training wastage. And we want to try and avoid that. Now, look, we've spent 2020, um, you know, having to take on our learning via webinar, Zoom and, and other online um, opportunities. And certainly the amount of people presenting online has ballooned. Uh, but what I'm hearing and, and what people are telling me is that, you know, my goodness, it's a bit hard to sort of um, find some relevancy out of it. So, you know, the solution is well-designed online learning experiences. And I want to just reiterate one more time, we can't just take the same old bunch of stuff that we were doing in the room and rinse and then repeat it on a webinar because that's just not going to work. So let's have a look now at online learning and fighting the forgetting curve. So you may well have, if you've been a student of learning theory, you may well have seen this type of graph before as well, which is basically looking at reinforcement or review uh, regularly to be able to bring back up um, the learning so that the forgetting um, is less. So what we can do with that, and I'm saying now when we move to an online environment, there are many, many options available to us to really get that graph on the left-hand side. They're working in our favor. So chunking information down into bite-sized bits. Not everything has to be done live. So there are certain pieces of focused information transfer that can be recorded so that people can... Uh, you know, access them in their own time and fit them in and around work. So a concept that's explained in a 10 minute video with a little activity or reflection exercise based on the key leadership challenges that that, in, in, from that individual is facing uh, is a very good way. So we don't have to do six hours worth of content. We can chunk it down. And in fact, any person who's designed a full day session that has worked well, it's actually a series of little chunks that are strung together anyway. Otherwise you lose people, they switch off, they're gone before the morning tea break and you struggle to get them back. Instructor one-on-one. -on -one. So you can still have that happen with online learning. It's called a phone call <laughs> or a Zoom session. And I make sure in my online learning, and I'll show you the the, the much of the outline of the course in a moment but I get on to a call with those people because remember what I told you I did in the session when we were doing things live with an audience what are your leadership challenges and then I debrief with each individual around the room and I do that relatively quickly because we had to get through 20 of them yeah this situation gives us an opportunity to, to even spend 15 minutes with an individual for them to pre-think what their key leadership challenges are, to have a little instruction video, a little five-minute video about um, how to think about that, um, some understanding about removing labels, some understanding about exact descriptions of behavior or circumstance or situation. They can prepare that in their own time. They can then upload that to the online learning management system as an assignment. So the instructor can pre-read that. Then there can be a very focused one-on-one -on -one, uh, instructor-led uh, debriefing call as to what are those leadership challenges with the outcome to be Bruce or Mary. These are going to be the particular skills and strategies out of this online learning uh, course that you're doing that are going to really hit the nail on the head for you with those leadership challenges. Yes, so that's really, really big opportunity and we should um, not sacrifice that instructor to participant personalized communication just because we're going online learning. Um, it's very easy to jump on a Zoom call or, or, you know, I've got a mobile plan now that I can, got that many minutes I can call anywhere in the world and have a discussion with someone.
Uh, and it's very easy to do if you put the effort in. Group discussion format webinars. So what I do in, in the online, um, the engaging leader online, is I actually put a number, a few of these together. So online group discussion format after a certain amount of content has been delivered and it's literally a Q&A situation. Um, also after I've done the one-on-one -on -one with the learning path, I do a short webinar there, half an hour, where we bring all the participants together and I talk about the commonalities that are coming out in terms of the key leadership challenges and get them prepared for the content that's coming ahead. Um, we don't breach any privacy with anyone there, so, so no particular individuals are talked about, um, but I can just tell people this seems to be some of the, the big key issues for this particular group, so we're going to make sure we get plenty of information to you on that. That's another way to use the webinar. Um, a Facebook group for reflection questions. So there are plenty of sort of, I guess, portals and, and areas where you can get people together online. But what I've found is that just about everybody has Facebook anyway. And if you put together a closed Facebook group that only uh, the people in the online course can get access to, then your chances of people using it are higher because it's on the mobile device, it's in their pocket when they sit down and maybe on the lounge chair or whatever, they can be reminded because they'll get the notifications from Facebook. So incorporating um, Facebook is a good thing for the purpose of um, reflection questions and discussion. The other beautiful thing about a Facebook group, of course, is that you can time the release of content. So if there are certain key additional elements of content, you can time those to be released with the drip of content on the online learning system uh, or staggered a day or two or um, staggered by a week by way of creating some sort of a um, review or reminder of content to help again with the graph that you see on the left hand side there. Quizzes and gamification so people can earn points and certificates. Quizzes are a really good thing to do so those short chunks of information that I talked about in number one putting a little quiz um, at the end of that that hits on the key points out of that learning is a very important thing because remember the learning curve before it starts to drop off immediately the forgetting curve I should say drops off immediately so if you watch a 10 minute video and then you're caught, asked to recall information within that 10 minutes it's going to do wonders for uh, remembering it and not forgetting involvement from the manager so in my online learning the uh, engaging leader online the invitation is there for a manager to be involved you don't have to pay extra for the manager which is great but the manager will receive some information about what the participant is going to be learning and they will have some reminders happening along the way in terms of the types of content that are being covered and the types of activities that the learners are being asked to do and some useful conversations that could be had between manager and participant. It's also really good for the learner to choose a buddy. The buddy doesn't have to be doing the course, but some organizations are sending multiple people along, so the participants could be each other's buddies. But if you want to remember something and commit it to memory, one of the best things to do is to explain it to somebody else. So even if you had a buddy that wasn't doing the course and you were discussing the finer points of a preventative uh, assertive message or a preventative I message, which is one of the things we teach in the, in the assertive communication area, um, you would explain that to someone so, to, um, so that they can understand it as well. And the very act of teaching something to someone else means that you have understood it quite well and teaching it to someone else is equally as good as using it in a, um, so implementing it in a, in a circumstance or a situation. Um, the opportunity to discuss ref and, and reflect with that buddy as well, all of those things help the content to remain front of mind and uh, for the forgetting curve to be annulled somewhat. Review materials. So as well as the chunks of information that are presented like I discussed in number one there's additional information that can go so an audio recording I do a lot of those little podcast uh, that people can pick up on their mobile and just listen to as they're driving or as they're on the bus uh, infographics 
Um, the infographics are, are another type of mnemonic, believe it or not. So as long as they're not too crowded with information, they can help people remember additional notes and application activities. So a lot of this needs to be driven by a motivated learner as well. But of course, if we've got the manager involved, then that can help. Um, optional extension material. So in order to not create overwhelm, good online learning systems will allow information to um, firstly be dripped out, but then you can have additional information open up as a participant completes certain sections. And that additional information can be labeled as optional extra. The introductory video to that information can be, hey, if this, inf if this particular topic has, has um, caught your interest and you want to learn more, then we've just made available some other information that covers X, Y, and Z for you. You can dive into that if you want to. I think that's important. Uh, and I realize this, you know, Way, way, way back, probably 15 years ago, I used to actually take a suitcase of books to my full-day leadership workshops. So even before I started doing the What's Your Leadership Challenge, and I would set them up at the front of the room, not because I was selling them, for goodness sake. They were my books. They were dog-eared and notes taken on them, highlighters all over them. But I found there was a percentage of the class that at every break, was diving in there and, and noting down authors and titles and asking me, hey, where can I get this from? And there was a, a few really good business bookstores in town that I could refer them to. And so there was a percentage of the audience that was interested in knowing more. They wanted to take their learning experience, take charge of it and go further. So <clears throat> point number nine there, I think, is important for that percentage of the cohort. Of course, timing, so drip feed, so we don't create this learning overwhelm and we don't create this desire for people just to, to click through and say, oh yeah, I got to it and skim through. Uh, and then of course, lifetime access. So the beautiful thing with online learning is that people, as long as they keep their username and password, uh, they can continue to dive back into that material whenever. Uh, and also from a... Um, reinforcement point of view, you know, email reminders and so forth can go out long after the actual courseware is done to remind people there may be a new piece of information um, that's thrown up in that area, that's been put up in that area uh, and encourage people to get back into the material. There's so much you can see there that you can't really do um, with an in-room six-hour, one-day workshop. And by the way, getting people to one-day workshops now is getting harder and harder and harder. It was literally 10 years ago we started uh, a session with our state police force here, a senior leadership training, and we called it the leadership short shots, um, like a little short shot of coffee. Uh, what the leader there, the learning leader at the um, police academy was telling me that they were getting bookings for full-day and half-day workshops, but those bookings were getting pulled either by the participant or their immediate um, leader the afternoon before or the morning of um, be, because um, the workload w was just such that they couldn't go. And so at that point, uh, he did some surveys and he found out that there would be commitment for regular two hours. If a, if a two-hour session could be packaged up and hit a particular topic area really well, then um, the leaders were said they'd, they'd support uh, individuals being able to get off site and get to that. And we were oversubscribed on some of them. Some of them we had 60 people in the room on particular topics. Others we were down to never much below 25, um, but some were 50, 60, even more um, at those um, short shots to deal with a specific, specific thing. So the Engaging Online Leader course by James McDamara. So it's 10 and a half hours of content and activity over 21, two days. So three weeks, effectively. Um, and it's got a built-in reinforcement program. Let me just show you through in detail how week one works and then I won't bore you with all of the content for the other ones. We can discuss that later if you need to. But in week one, it starts off with a participant welcome and, and video. That's 10 minutes. And the manager has access to one as well. 
so the manager can get fully briefed on what the participant is about to go through and how they can best support them. What is leadership? Uh, a video for 10 minutes to start to get the participants thinking about this concept of leadership. Then there's an activity. I don't think it takes more than 10 minutes. What are your top leadership challenges? So a little video um, instruction, only a few minutes, and then the balance to think about what are their top leadership challenges. Then there's 20 minutes with the instructor, that's me, on a phone call or on a Zoom call to unpack those leadership challenges. So those leadership challenges get written down, um, put into a Word doc, and actually uploaded to the online learning management system that drives all of this. And so I get a copy of that. I'm able to um, preview that and then jump on a call with the individual. Now I do all of those calls pretty well back to back over day two and day three of the program. So I get through a whole lot of them. Uh, and then we've got the Leadership Challenges Summary Webinar on day four. So that's only 30 minutes, but that gives people a chance to see what are the key and common issues that are coming up for people. Good chance for a little bit of Q&A and discussion there and gets people into the flow of their first live event um, with this three-week course. The Language of Why, which is a content video um, talking about the importance of being able to uh, show people how their day-to-day -day work fits into creating the organization that we want to be in the next three to five years. My Leadership Purpose, which is an activity. So that's a self-guided visualization. Takes about 15 minutes for someone to do. Uh, then we're onto the next piece of content, which is about trust. There's a little activity. Only takes them about five minutes to do, but the 13 um, high trust behaviors and they can give themselves a chance to to rate themselves against those if they're a senior leader they can give themselves a chance to say how are my junior leaders going with these do I need to have some critical conversations uh, around any of these uh, then there's a review Q&A webinar um, position for about 60 minutes uh, at the end of that seven day period where we're starting to unpack the lead the language of why um, my leadership purpose and trust. So that's 3.3 hours of time for the individual. If they choose to take more time with some of those activities, that by all means they can, um, but 3.3 hours. So week two is 3.7 hours, very similar format. I won't fill in all the bits and pieces for you. And week three, uh, 3.6 hours. So there's about 10 and a half hours of content there. And so the content uh, from the one-day workshop is included within there, but we're able to um, help um, embellish and strengthen that with a range of other um, learning activities and application exercises to really help the learning to stick. And of course, there's a reinforcement program that runs through that, without, with, through all of that and, and beyond. So the online leader sorry, the engaging leader online course objectives are as follows. There's a handful of them. Understand how to enroll your team in the organization's big picture. So that's the language of why. Determine your own leadership purpose. Know how to build trust. That's an incredibly important one, the building of trust. Um, people often lament over the fact that there's an absence of trust uh, and that's interfering with um, productivity and employee engagement and uh, morale at work and all of those things. Well, how do we build trust? So we talk about that in detail. Be able to work to an individual's strengths and not be frustrated by their differences. That's incredibly important for leaders to be able to do that and for them to teach their team members how to do it. Have a command of the micro, not micros, micro communication skills needed to influence behavior change in team members. Um, there's some really, really powerful th things come out of here. Be able to match your chosen leadership style with the follower's readiness level. In other words, how can we be flexible with our leadership style? Uh, we can't just keep trying to put round pegs in square holes all the time. Sometimes we need to be flexible and lead a little differently to what our preferences are and perhaps even our personality may determine. Um, but for a leader to be a, to the key 
is for a leader to get the, their eyes off themselves, really, and start to think, what does my follower need from me in order to be able to succeed in this task? That's the key learning, and, we're, and there's a lot to unpack there. And we go right into um, the material, um, Hersey's material around um, situational leadership. Uh, and they will have implemented course skills and strategies into their work via application exercises. So we start with the leadership challenges um, and we give people an understanding of what sets of skills and strategies are going to mean the most to them. Uh, and they are also in tow with their manager um, looking at what they want to get out of the course, what improvements they would like to make. Uh, and we're encouraging them all the way along to be able to implement things. And there's a chance in our review sessions and discussions to talk and troubleshoot over the course of the three weeks uh, implementation. And of course, in the last week, I get back onto a one-on-one -on -one call with them. Uh, and that's where we review where they've had their successes in implementing um, new leadership skills and strategies and, and having some wins. Uh, and we also look at what are some of the things where they're still going to need some focus and some energy and I give them some support around that. So we really do wrap our arms around them for the full three weeks. So what are the logistics around this? Well, the online learning modules open up on Monday, January the 18th. So as you saw from that little timeline, there's a few things they do self-guided before they get to the first live uh, interaction, which is the one-on-one -on -one for the leadership challenges. So the first one-on-one -on -one live session starts Tuesday, January, Tuesday the 19th of January. So that's Tuesday the 19th of January in Australia. That'll be Monday the 19th in North America, of course. Um, so for our North American participants, one-on-one -on -one sessions will be available from 2 p.m. LA time or earlier if needed. So 2 p.m. LA time is about 8 a.m. Brisbane time the following day. Um, and our group live sessions, so the group webinars that we run, I'll be running them at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Australian time, and that's 3 p.m. LA time. A little bit later for those in uh, towards sort of Chicago and, of course, over towards um, New York. But, uh, you know, it's no later than 6 p.m., which is a, not a bad time to be absorbing a webinar anyway. Uh, nominate a manager so there's no extra charge. I think that's important if, if you're a learning and development manager looking at this and you're wanting to put people through. Uh, the time input for the manager won't be onerous and the manager will get some support in terms of things that they can learn and review to be able to help lead some useful discussions with the uh, learner. Uh, we'd ask the learner to choose a buddy. The buddy's not required to do the course, and it's not essential if they can't get that. Um, and their buddy could be someone at home as well. Sometimes people go home to uh, flatmates or partners who are very interested and supportive of each other's career. So the opportunity to do some three-person teaching um, in that format to help with recall uh, is is um, right there and, and available. So. Um, the buddy thing shouldn't be a, a blockage in any way. So <clears throat> the January special for this is 895 plus GST in Australia. Um, if you're zoning in, zooming in from uh, the USA, GST doesn't apply. So that's a January special. We'll be putting it up to the regular price of 1295 plus GST from February. Uh, so the January intake is uh, an extra special. And one more thing, if there's a second person from the same organisation, we'll give $150 off the second booking. So there's every good reason to kick off 2021 um, with some advanced uh, leadership training through this dynamic three-week, 22-day uh, online learning program for the engaging leader. So the next steps really, use the form below this video to book a call with me. Uh, I'll make sure that you get all of your qu questions answered and your enrollment process underway. Um, and take advantage of course of that once only uh, special offer for January. So go ahead, if this has excited you in terms of taking a a thorough approach to online learning and, and um, wringing as much out of it that the online learning space has to offer, then go ahead and, and pop your details in the form below 
and we'll make sure that we catch up and have a good talk uh, and help you become involved with what we're doing. Okay, everybody, uh, if you're watching this prior to Christmas, hope you have a fantastic Christmas and New Year. Uh, and if you're watching it uh, early in January 2021, don't delay. Uh, this January course will fill up, and of course, then that once only special pricing is gone forever. Uh, so don't delay, jump onto it. Okay, everybody, bye for now.